Hi, everybody. Uh, we're here today to discuss a very important uh, topic, erectile dysfunction. So this affects a lot of men and a lot more than people realize because sexual health is kind of a taboo subject and people don't really want to talk about it or admit when they have problems with this. And it's important. It's important to health. It's important for everyday life and enjoying life. There's a lot of benefits to orgasms. Uh, you age better, your immune systems increase, reduce depression, anxiety, reduce cardiovascular disease. So it's an important topic to discuss. So I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint here and we're going to go into this a little more. So just some interesting statistics. So one in 10 men are affected. And then when men age, it gets worse. So above age 40, one in five men are affected. Okay. So again, this is a common problem. 50% uh, of men above age 40 suffer from some form of ED. So this is not necessarily complete erectile dysfunction where no erection can be had, but you know, there's still some issue there. Um, only 33% of the men who have erectile dysfunction actually seek help for this condition. So again, because this issue is so taboo or they might feel embarrassed, men aren't seeking help when they are struggling with this. And it says up to 20% of relationships are ended due to erectile dysfunction. So that's huge. Think about that. Think about all the marriages or the long-term relationships that could be saved if, if men were willing to talk about this issue more. Again, it's one of the most common sexual dysfunction in men. Um, so this, this is the problem they're going to complain about the most. Um, just some other interesting statistics. About half of the men with diabetes also have some form of erectile dysfunction. And smoking also increases the risk of erectile dysfunction by 50%. So there's a lot of lifestyle factors there that can also play a part. So how does a, a typical erection occur? So basically you have two chambers to the penis and corpus cavernosa is what they're called. When the penis is in the resting state, um, there's not, the blood is flowing in and out. Um, but when there, there is an erection occurring or a man is turned on, blood will flow into the penis and these corpora cavernosa chambers will relax, okay? And the venous outflow will be restricted. So you're, you're getting this compression and all this blood is trapped for, for the erection. And then at the end of the erection or after orgasm, a muscle contraction will allow that blood flow to once again leave the penis and a normal resting state occurs. So um, again, two chambers, they're filling with blood, the increased blood flow and the trapping of the blood in the corpora cavernosa is what actually causes the erection. So what are some causes um, of erectile dysfunction? So if you're not getting good blood flow or neurovascularly, you're having issues, um, that's going to cause erectile dysfunction. So tied with this atherosclerosis or plaque in the vessels, you see this a lot with men with heart disease, hyperlipidemia, again, diabetes, because that affects the vasculature, strokes, some different neurological disorders, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis. There are several medications um, that can cause erectile dysfunction. A few classes that I'd like to name specifically, a lot of the antidepressants, specifically um, tricyclic antidepressants and SSRIs, which are very common, um, commonly prescribed, and they cause men a lot of issues. Some of the blood pressure medications like diuretics and beta blockers can also do this. And then there are several lifestyle factors, um, such as alcohol, recreational drugs, smoking, and obesity that can all contribute as well. And then for the men who have had prostate cancer, some have had to have like rad radical uh, prostatectomies where they've had the prostate removed. This can also cause issues, um, different injuries, paralysis. Um, and also there's some uh, psychological stress anxiety that can lead to this as well. Pyronis disease we'll talk about in a minute. So what are some treatment options? There's a lot of treatments out there for this. The first thing I would recommend for all the patients is, you know, 
lifestyle things. So weight loss, uh, you know, if you're diabetic, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, make sure these things are treated and you're following with your physician and you've got these controlled and that you're on plans to lose or manage weight. The same thing with smoking and alcohol and recreational drugs. If any of these things are an issue, getting uh, the patient to quit is a, you know, that's, that's optimal to help with this condition. Those are natural things that men can do to help uh, with this problem. The next thing we'd want to do is definitely get a full panel of labs. A lot of men, and especially as they age, their testosterone lowers. So testosterone is needed. These, these chemicals that are released that are causing erection, you have to have testosterone. And as men age, naturally their testosterone goes down. So optimizing testosterone, um, and there's lots of things out there at my shop. We do bioidentical hormones for testosterone replacement men which has a ton of health benefits and men feel great on them. So that's a, that's a big thing too. Um, some other options. So everybody knows Viagra, right? There's, there's a bunch of other ones. There's Cialis, Levitra, there's several more, but those are probably the main ones. Um, oral medications can be used. Okay. And that again, just allows that smooth muscle relaxation um, to occur so that a man can have an erection. Um, there's different injections. So there's actual um, prostaglandin injections uh, that can be given directly that again, cause that smooth muscle relaxation. There's also intra um, urethral medications that patients can use um, to cause an erection. I also want to give a shout out to um, use of PRP. If you've heard of the P shot, um, you can do PRP exosomes, and this actually, um, helps increase blood flow, which again, you know, if there's no blood, no good blood flow to the penis, you're not going to get the erection you once had. So, um, that's another really good option. We, we do those in our office as well. Um, another great effective treatment is shockwave therapy. Um, doesn't, doesn't, uh, do as bad as it sounds, I guess, but, uh, shockwave actually increases angiogenesis. So again, that is increasing blood flow to the penis and, um, the recommended, there's several machines out there for this. Some are better than others. Um, but in our office, we do six treatments. They take about 15 to 20 minutes and you do it twice a week for six total treatments. And that has a success rate of about 85% with some two amazing results. Um, you can pair shockwave treatment or use it alone with um, penis pumps or a vacuum. And that change of air pressure um, actually causes an erection. And some men will actually put a ring, um, almost a tourniquet like to the base of the penis so that after they've gotten an erection from the pump, they can have sexual intercourse. Um, but again, um, we actually in our office will have a male do a penis pump for five minutes after we've given a P shot just to um, increase the vasculature and vessels that are released from the penis pump. Um, another more radical option would be a penile implant or prosthesis. Um, this would be done if a, if a male literally like has no blood flow, uh, there's these other alternatives are not working. This is kind of like a last resort for someone who has really no function. And, um, what they do with the penile implants is they put a rod in the shaft of the penis and it's an inflatable rod. So you, you can basically blow it up with saline to cause an erection. And then the actual pump part is inserted um, in the scrotal area. So a, a man can press that if he wants to have an erection. So that's more of, again, an extreme treatment, but those are some of the options. Um, so again, we've got a variety of injections, the intraurethral um, um, medication. And then there's the pumps, the shockwave therapies, the testosterone replacement lifestyle changes. Again, medications um, are a big, are a big thing. If you can change to a different type of high blood pressure medication or get off those antidepressants, which I found in my office, a lot of men, once they've had their testosterone replaced and they're feeling better, they can get off of those antidepressants, which has a great impact on their um, sexual function and their libido. Um, 
Uh, other thing, Pyronis disease, you can get like a fibrous plaque buildup in the penis. And those can also be treated with um, P shots and shockwave therapy. And there's also surgical treatments for that as well. But that's another, another thing that can happen. But yeah, these, like I said, there is a variety of um, treatments and this doesn't have to be something that a man lives with and just kind of says, well, I guess that's not going to happen anymore because, you know, life's worth living. If it's affecting you, if it's causing a strain on your relationship or your mental health, you should get it treated and we can do that. And there's lots of options out there as we've just discussed. And some things are simple, you know getting a blood test to see where testosterone is, stopping the cigarettes and the excessive alcohol, getting a couple medication change. Some of these things are simple. The sound wave therapy is extremely effective. It's non-invasive. So there's a lot of good um, options out there. And I would certainly recommend that you look into those. And we're happy to help you. Um, like I said, we do all the stuff in my office. If you guys had any questions at all, um, you could always call and talk to us. Uh, 606-393-1211 is our office number. Again, that's 606-393-1211. Um, and you can look us up on our website too, www.lionlifelaserremoval.com. And that's all together. Again, www.lionlifelaserremoval.com. And that has some more information for you, but we're happy to help. Or if you have any other questions, this is a serious issue that affects a lot of men and we want to make sure we're, we're addressing it accordingly. So thanks for hanging in there with me tonight. We'll look forward to talking to you soon.